Um, a little bit about me. I did my degrees uh, at Monash and uh, St. Lucia in Queensland. I then went to Charles Sturt uh, to write the third year of their Viticulture Diploma and I was there for four years. While I was there I received a syndicated research grant from the federal government and with Brown Brothers and funded by Rabobank we developed a biological against um, Botrytis that uh, was the, the IP belonged to Brown Brothers and uh, we actually developed the, the, the organism through to a product that could be applied in the field but I never ever heard any more about it. I understand that it went to Sagenta or BASF or somewhere in Europe and uh, it never came out. But uh, Roland Woolquest was the person from Brown Brothers who was involved and so I'm not exactly sure whatever happened to that organism. But it was brilliant, it would have made a really good biological. However, I didn't own the IP so I <laughs> lost track of what was happening to it. After Charles Sturt, I was invited to go back to Monash uh, to the Faculty of Business and Economics, would you believe, as the foundation director of the Centre for Wine, Food and Agribusiness. So while there, I wrote with my colleagues from um, Dukey, Jeff Bath, you'll know, and uh, a few other people who were there, we wrote a, um, uh, a master's program in distance ed, in distance, well, it was, it was to be presented in a block, what we call a block mode, such that students could come in from international, from all around Australia, very successfully. However, the faculty decided that it wasn't their prime direction, so they uh, finished that particular master's. So I went across to Melbourne University with Snow Barlow and Jeff, and we wrote another uh, or a variation on that particular master's, which I understand is still running, uh, because Jeff and I are. Uh, in that throes of retiring unsuccessfully, but we've kind of changed and we run the, now the, um, the diplomas of viticulture and uh, winemaking that used to be out of Melbourne University. We're now running them out of uh, Goulburn Ovens TAFE at Dukey. So Jeff and I still get together, uh, no, out of, yes, Goulburn Ovens TAFE at Benella, but we run them at Dukey. So uh, we still get together and do our viticulture and I know there's at least one of the or two of the students uh, that have been through those excellent diplomas. I then kind of retired and I'm now uh, lecturing part-time this time in the Faculty of Medicine at Monash uh, because with climate change there are a lot of fungal pathogens and hosts that are coming out of the sub-Saharan, that, that equatorial uh, belt around the centre of the globe are starting to move out and into the temperate climates and there was nobody about who had the expertise to lecture in this particular component and so I do some lectures at Monash Medical Faculty now which are great fun because my, my, um, my part of my agreement was there's no meetings, no administration, no marking I will give my lectures and I'll write exam papers and they said yes. So now I'm into about my third year. Um, I run my own company which is Agpath Proprietary Limited along with Alan who's sitting around the corner there. That's my husband. Um, uh, we've been running uh, this company for probably uh, oh, since the early 80s and it's an agricultural consulting company um, and we do a lot of work in all types of agriculture. Uh, over the last three years I've been involved with uh, Dr. Elaine Ingham from the Soil Food Web Institute and AgPath is a lab that does the Soil Food Web testing for Southern Australia and Elaine and I run a two-week uh, course at now at Dukey which we'll be running in August and so you're all welcome. The preliminary flyer is on my website already um, and Elaine uh, and I are trying to get some research going in Australia so I'm open to anybody who's interested in researching um, soil biology, soil non-chemical farming I guess is where I come from. Uh, we're trying to get data uh, for Australian conditions and part of the problem with using alternative products and biologicals is um, Someone will say, well, you know, it's snake oil, it doesn't work, show me the data. 
Now, it's not snake oil, it does work, and I'll tell you all about that tomorrow. Uh, but it's true, we don't have data. Uh, well, not data in Australia, there is, there is truckloads of data around the world to show that biological farming does work. And, um, but we don't have the data for Australia, so I would really be interested if any of you are interested in participating, in, in get, collecting some data, running very simple experiments, but using biological farming. Um, one of the ways that, or one of the things that's just happened in the last few months, Elaine has been appointed chief scientist of the Rodale Institute, uh, which is a big uh, organic farming, biological farming um, uh, area in Pennsylvania that has been uh, given to the people of America for biological farming. And so they've just put out a 30-year report, and you can take it off the web. You just need to go to, um, I think it's rodaleinstitute.org, and you'll see 30 years of um, comparative farming on biological versus uh, com uh, conventional, and it's there, and the only other long-term uh, projects that run biological against conventional is out of Rothamsted in the UK. So um, there, is, there is some interesting information there that you can source. And so Elaine and I are working together, um, and uh, as I say, I, I do her, her testing down here in this southern area. Um, we run workshops, etc., three-day workshops on how to how to how to um, make compost, uh, compost teas, um, how to use uh, on how to read the reports, uh, how to use the data in the reports, and so I guess at last, and um, now that I'm in this a uh, partial retirement mode, I now have five or six or seven days a week to really concentrate on uh, organic farming. We've run some very big long-term projects uh, actually on our farm at looking at alternatives. And what we're trying to do is reduce, well, reduce input costs to growers so that we can increase output um, figures, uh, but at the same time getting a long-term biological and healthy uh, soil. And so that all, that all takes time uh, and there's a lot of interest. And I'm hoping that at the end of the two days here, I'm sure I'm going to not, well, I'm going to tell you things that you already know, but maybe putting it together in a different context uh, will get you going again enthused in saying there is only one way to farm and that's biologically. There's no other option.